deeper into today's topic, we'll be talking with our expert Nico Mel. Nico is managing director at the Draper Richards Kaplan Foundation. Nico was the director of the Shorenstein Center on Media, Politics and Public Policy. To read more of Nico's thoughts, you can visit his Substack. Nico, can you tell us how the rise of the ad tech industry has impacted journalism or the news industry? For uh, almost 150 years, almost all the news was uh, subsidized, was paid for with advertising, mostly print advertising in newspapers. And um, that, you know, subscription fees for newspapers and what they used to call newsstand fees uh, were a pretty small percentage of overall newspaper and news revenue. The bulk of it was from advertising and advertising, uh, you know, big chunk of that was actually classified advertising. Uh, It's worth noting that for the most part, uh, Craigslist kind of really consumed, took away all the the, the classified advertising revenue. And so when news was looking at ad revenue and trying to figure out what to do online, it was a it was a strange world to the to the news industry. When I say news industry, I mean mean primarily the newspaper industry, but also television news and radio news too. But the bulk of the news in the United States is produced by uh, by the newspaper industry, even to this day. And so the newspaper industry just really wasn't sure how to navigate the digital space, and that created an opportunity for ad tech and third party providers of software to kind of insert themselves between the audience and the publisher uh, to manage ad sales. And that had another it had a positive impact, I'd say, for advertisers. You know, uh, famously, there was a depression era supermarket magnate called Wanamaker, and he said, half of my advertising works, I just don't know which half. Uh, it turns out it's more like 0.000001% of your advertising works, and you can get just that narrow slice if you're an advertiser, because uh, ad tech can aggregate audiences across multiple websites and multiple publishers and just sell you the tiny slice you want. That's great for advertisers, arguably good for consumers, asterisk, some data privacy issues there that are significant. It's generally been pretty terrible for publishers. You know, it's really had a very negative impact on publishers because there's a middleman taking a significant chunk of their revenue and and dealing with their advertisers. And so, you know, part of the challenges newspapers face and news publishers face is on the one side, their primary source of revenue, ad revenue, they've lost those customers. Those customers go to ad tech and demand side platforms now. And on the other end, they've lost their audience because their audience is going to Facebook and Twitter and search. And so they don't, they don't control either their audience or their advertisers. And that's created real challenges for the industry. So in uh, 2019, Representative David Ciceline introduced the Journalism Competition and Preservation Act and the News Media Alliance had released a report which basically talked about how journalism had been impacted by ad tech. So can you talk a little bit about that, about what is News Media Alliance's ask and what are they claiming and what's going on with that? I think those legislative moves to help the news industry are likely to not really have any significant effect. For for newspaper publishers uh, moving towards what we might call walled gardens, Mm -hmm. like paywalls or subscription models. You know, I said earlier that for 150 years, pretty much all the news was subsidized by advertising. There is no future where that is the case, none. And so newspapers, news organizations have to change their businesses to be subscriber-oriented businesses to what they call reader revenue. And ad tech is not the, the problem that's really killing newspapers. The problem killing newspapers is one, they've lost control of, they don't own their audiences or their advertisers. And two, you know, frankly, Google's cost per click model the the kind of performance-based pricing of advertising uh, combined with the blind auction, the demand side blind auction, that's like a giant anchor w- bringing all, all cost of advertising down. It's, it's really commodifying advertising in, in a certain sense in a way that, that I don't think there are clear legislative fixes. 
Moreover, for the ad tech market, I think that a much bigger challenge for ad tech and for publishers is, you know, recent announcements from people like Apple and Google about the increased control they're going to exert over managing people's data. Google in particular, with its recent announcement around essentially more or less phasing out cookies from Google Chrome, that is really a disaster for most of the ad tech industry. So I guess it doesn't exactly, that doesn't really answer your question, but I, I think anything we can do to help local publishers is important and we should really look at but moving the needle ultimately is going to be about transitioning from ad-based businesses to subscription-based businesses and recognizing that data and algorithms arbitrages down the value of advertising, fundamentally changing the business model. And I, I, I don't think there's anything you can do about that. That's not the fault of any single company or industry. That's the nature of the digitization of information. So that brings me to, I guess, the EU laws and uh, what's happened in Australia, because there is uh, regulation being passed or at least being discussed in the rest of the world. And a lot of it is about having publishers get paid for the content that is used on these platforms. So can you talk a little bit about what's going on over there and uh, how does that fit into what you just said? In the case of Australia and the EU, I remain skeptical. Uh, deeply skeptical that uh, on two fronts, one, that those, th those things would generate any meaningful revenue for news producers. I just don't see the economics working. A and two, I don't think it deals with any of the actual underlying issues. The underlying issue is that advertising market has gotten ruthlessly efficient because of the introduction of data. And if your business model is built on advertising, it's just not going to fly. I mean, think about this. Let's say I own a, a, a store uh, and I sell, I don't know, tennis shoes. And I go uh, and take an ad in the newspaper or buy an ad on the radio. I don't really know how many people saw the ad. I don't know if the ad, it could be nobody heard it because or nobody read it. It's just possible, right? There's no data to track that. Moreover, uh, it's, it's actually more likely that a lot of people saw the ad or heard the ad, but they're not the people I'm trying to sell tennis shoes to. They're people who don't play tennis or what have you, right? And the very nature of the internet, the way data works on the internet has just, has just changed that equation. It's brought ruthless efficiency to the advertising market. And you will not be able to claw back the value of advertising and so uh th that's th that means that we're in that news companies have to be in a different sort of business something much more akin to i'd say the cable news business in the us where there's a combination of carriage fees and advertising but ultimately the carriage fees are the really important part so that said uh there's a lot of talk in Congress and Senate about passing antitrust and big tech regulation. And I think the publisher aspect is a huge part of it. So do you think the US is going to follow EU or Australia's lead and pass laws, which will ask these companies to pay for news or pass laws which make them have to pay snippet taxes, something like that, what, what shows up on Google at the top, uh, which Spain, I think, tried a while back and then Google pulled out. Uh, so do you think any of that is going to happen or what can we expect from all this big talk that is going on in D.C. right now? So I think a lot of the talk in D.C. is it's hard to say where it will all land, but I would say there are two big problems that that are clear to everyone across the political spectrum. The first is the problem of misinformation on platforms. And, uh, and there doesn't appear to be a good solution, but finding ways to incentivize quality information would be, would be smart. And so I expect to see some policy solutions out there towards that. 
you know, the U.S. government did this 100 plus years ago, where it basically provided a postal subsidy to magazines and newspapers to try and encourage quality information uh, to be delivered to U.S. households. And so trying to figure out how to combat misinformation with both some regulation to create more accountability so you can't just say or do anything you want on these platforms, combined with some, you might say, carrot to go with the stick, some incentive towards quality uh, information online to balance out the misinformation. The, the other big problem that I think everyone across the political spectrum in, in D.C. Uh, understands is that monopolies discourage innovation and are bad for the consumer. This is not necessarily about news, right? I mean, it's about machine learning, artificial intelligence, robots, drones, you name it, but that big companies can buy patents and squash upstart competitors in ways that are anti-competitive and, and bad for consumers. And if I had to guess, that is the problem that, they're, that, that regulators and legislators are really going to try and tackle, because it's a much easier problem to tackle, in a sense, than the problem of misinformation and the quality of information online. All right, great. Thank you, Nico, for taking time out and talking to us. Anytime. My pleasure. Yeah.